Hello there, a very good evening and welcome to another edition of Newsline Live coming to you live as always from our News First studios here in Colombo. Our guest this evening is Professor uh, Sunil Premavansa. He's an emeritus professor at the University of Colombo and an immunologist. A very good evening, Professor, and uh, welcome to the show. Very good evening, Shalan. Professor, well, we've been discussing about the COVID-19 pandemic for the past year or so, but uh, things change quite fast uh, when it comes to a pandemic of this nature. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, we had... Um, we had a single variant spreading all over the world, then uh, that variant had mutated. And now in Sri Lanka, the most um, concerning factor, at least among uh, the medical community in the country and the people as, as, uh, as a whole, uh, is the detection of the Delta variant in Sri Lanka. However, only five patients to date have been detected with the Delta variant. Uh, now, uh, this, these five patients were de detected quite some time ago. Does this mean that um, the Delta variant has not spread from those five patients to the community? Or is it just that, you know, maybe there could be other people, but we haven't tested enough yet? Yeah, I think so. I think the further screening will show up if, there are, if they are infected with the Delta variant. Mm. And uh, so there are other variants, uh, you know, that time to time some, some variants are dominating. Mm. You know, in the, uh, you know, this Delta variant, uh, uh, previously, UK, for example, mm. they had uh, the dominant variant as alpha variant, but mm. uh, after from India it was originated, mm. and after it went to, uh, you know, to UK, mm. now it has gone up to 60 percent, mm. so like that. So with, I mean, if you have enough screening, mm. uh, you can, you may detect some other, uh, other, uh, the, the same delta variant in other patients as well. Mm. But it, with the course of time, it will appear. Uh, Professor, we just uh, got out of uh, about a month, a little bit more over mm. a month of lockdown measures in mm -hmm. the country. Uh, now, of course, there is much debate on uh, whether lockdown needs to be lifted. People have economic concerns on their side. Uh, there are many factors that need to be weighed in. Um, but with the easing of lockdown uh, regulations in the country, uh, does that mean that we as a country must brace for an increase in the number of cases that are being detected in the community? Yeah, I think, um, Shalan, the, the travel restrictions is a must in this kind of pandemic situation. And uh, because uh, the, the gathering of people is a big factor for spreading the disease, and uh, so the travel restrictions have to be imposed at a very high level. Mm. And, uh, but as you said, uh, there are other problems as well. Mm. The, because the people, uh, uh, their day-to-day -day life activities and you know, the, mm. uh, they have to work and get their wages and all those things, they also matter. So mm. it has to be balanced properly mm. because if there, if there are travel restrictions, if they are in the, at the households, then they have to be provided hmm. with the food and other things it, it was done in previously hmm. so the uh, the travel res restrictions is I think uh, it's a must hmm. because it can prevent the infection spreading hmm. uh, because the gatherings uh, because if, if there are gatherings social gatherings the that is a prime factor for the spread of this uh, COVID-19 so I, there is lots of evidence coming from the whole world Hmm. to show that if you have uh, rigid restrictions, you hmm. can, to a certain level, you can limit it. Professor, uh, today a new measure was announced in uh, combating the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. This uh, measure is uh, regarding taking care of COVID-19 patients. Now, we know that the hospital system here in Sri Lanka is a tad bit overwhelmed mm -hmm. uh, with the number of patients coming in. We have opened new intermediary care centers, but still, even these centers are filling up quite fast. Today, the Ministry of Health announced measures to uh, uh, provide care for COVID-19 patients in their homes. They launched a hotline for doctors to be uh, uh, overseeing these patients who are being treated at home or being taken care at home uh, over the phone. Mm -hmm. um, is this a, success, a successful measure? Do you see this, uh, some sort of success in this measure? Y yes, uh, I think Shalan now uh, at the hospitals, you know, not only in Sri Lanka, in many other, even in the U.S., uh, there's a lack of facilities uh, for the management of COVID patients. Mm -hmm. You know, the machinery, the required oxygen, high-flow oxygen machines, and all the 
other countries, uh, US, UK, they, they also face these kind of problems. Hmm. So in Sri Lanka, uh, we have the same. Hmm. You know, the doctors are saying, clinicians are saying that there are uh, lack of facilities. So hmm. they, uh, they, it's very difficult for them to manage the patients. Hmm. So this is maybe a good measure, but there are other sites as well. If there are patients at home, you know, they have to be protected very well, and there are other people who are moving around. Hmm. So all those things have to be balanced out, I think. Hmm. But um, when it comes to the safety of the COVID-19 patients, mm -hmm. um, wouldn't it be better if these patients are taken to intermediary care centers, or is it just that we are currently yeah. being overwhelmed by the number of cases yeah, that are being reported? It depends on the severity, the complications a patient mm. is having. If there are you know, uh, complications, mm. severe complications, then they have to be treated under strict medical care in the ICU uni units. Mm. But if the mild symptoms, uh, then uh, it, it may be possible to tackle. No. Getting back to our discussion on the COVID-19 variants that mm -hmm. are being identified here in Sri Lanka, uh, currently there have been only five uh, people who have been identified with the COVID-19, the Delta variant. Mm -hmm. um, Professor, how really are these variants identified? Say if I go get myself tested for COVID-19 and I end up testing positive, uh, would the authorities be able to know which variant I have been infected with based on the PCR test or are there other tests that need to be yeah. conducted? It depends on the PCR. Some other countries, they have probes to find the variants. Mm. Or else, uh, after the PCR, we have to do, the, do another molecular biological assessment, the sequencing to find out the mutation, mm. whether they are Delta variants or others. So uh, when the Ministry of Health, uh, the Director General gets mm -hmm. his uh, analysis of the number of cases that have been reported on a single day, mm -hmm. that does not have a column that says this person is infected with this variant of the virus. Uh, there's a time factor for that. If you, are, if, you are giving, if you need to give the information for the uh, variant types, then you have to uh, use specific uh, testing, molecular biological testing. Mm. But uh, for the normal patient care, it, it is enough to say the patient is having, you know, COVID-19 infection. Uh, Professor, we have a question from one of our viewers. Uh, this viewer is wondering as to if a single person can be infected with multiple variants of the COVID-19 virus. It may be possible because, uh, in a, uh, you know, it is natural uh, to happen because mm. in, in uh, with respect to other infections, mm -hmm. uh, you can have different, uh, you know, pathogens at the same time. For example, dengue virus, hantavirus, leptospira. At at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, you can get the patient. So there's a possibility. Mm -hmm. that e again, it depends on the transmission. Mm -hmm. If the person is uh, exposed to different variant types, there's a possibility of that person mm -hmm. uh, getting uh, different variants mix a mi kind of mix because it is a natural thing uh, that uh, some people uh, get different infections at the same time so uh, a, a single person can be infected with more than one variant of the covid 19 virus at the same time is that what you're saying yeah it's possible it depends on the exposure if mm. the person is exposed you know uh, in a short period of time mm. uh, to different patients who are having mm. different uh, uh, variants, variants. So there's a possibility of uh, having that mix because uh, it has been shown in other infections. Right. Mm -hmm. Professor, uh, when we speak about these variants, uh, mm -hmm. how do these variants come about and how does this virus uh, really begin to mutate while spreading among the community? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is now uh, <clears throat> virus or bacteria or any other organism, uh, for example, now we talk about virus virus they once they come into our body they have to propagate to make their own progeny uh, mm. they have to multiply mm. or bacteria also they have to multiply mm. once they are multiplying uh, they are budding up you know the viral particles increasing uh, they incorporate with our uh, our cells mm. and uh, they get into our cellular system and uh, increase at that time they they multiply their genetic material. Mm. So once they are uh, doing this shuffling, mm. mutations can happen. Mm. So that's what happened in here. Mm. But the, the, the strange thing is why the mutations are coming up mm. so fast. 
It has been shown for the COVID-19 uh, virus, even uh, within two, two months' time, mm -hmm. uh, two mutations can come up. There mm -hmm. are viruses in nature, bacteria, mm -hmm. the mutations occur slowly. Mm -hmm. That is for the evolution of you know, uh, bacteria or viruses. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the COVID-19 situation, the mutations are coming up very fast. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we are talking about uh, alpha variant, beta variant, gamma variant, epsilon variant, and finally now delta variant. But there are uh, about 100 variants which, are, which have come up with this. So it is very rapid mutations. So once they you know, uh, multiply the genetic material, mutations can happen. Mm. The question here is why these mutations uh, that are associated with the virulence of COVID-19, mm. why, why the COVID-19 uh, virus is giving up all these uh, mutations at, at a very high rate. Mm. So that is the problem with this uh, pandemic. So every new variant that comes into being, COVID-19 mm. variant that comes into being is more potent, more virulent, yeah. more dangerous yeah. than the previous variant. Yes. Yeah, that's right. The thing is now, uh, uh, Shalan, uh, the virus from their side, mm. they are trying to survive. Mm. Now we are trying to attack them. Mm. So there is a constant battle going through the evolution. So once they are coming now, for example, once the COVID-19 virus come into our body, mm. for their propagation, they have to bind to our uh, lung cells, for example. Mm. So they use uh, COVID-19 virus has some proteins which are called, as you know, spike protein. Mm -hmm. It has a shape. If you have the right shape, they mm -hmm. bind to our uh, proteins on mm -hmm. our lung cells, for example. If that binding is very tight, they can enter. Mm -hmm. If they if they find if if they mutate their genome, they might have the very right spike protein, which is very tightly binding to our uh, lung cell receptors. Then mm -hmm. they enter. Mm -hmm. So that is it is then they are successful in entering our lung cells. That mm. may be the reason why these, uh, because for their success, they select these uh, mutations. These mutations are bad for us, mm. but for the virus it is beneficial. That's why... And these mutations will continue to uh, be created by this virus as long as it spreads among the general yeah. public. Yes. Uh, with that, we will cross over to a short commercial break. For, uh, for our viewers who are wondering uh, where the usual host of the show, Farah Shaukat Ali, is, he is back in the country and he will be uh, coming on the show very soon. He's currently going through his quarantine period after returning from overseas. Um, and with that, we will cross over to a short commercial break. On the other side, we will be speaking with uh, Professor about uh, the vaccination program in Sri Lanka. Is mix and match the best way to go? For the answers, stay tuned. We'll be right back. News First, Newsline. Hello there, welcome back to Newsline Live. We're in discussion with uh, Professor Premawansa. He is an immunologist and an emeritus professor at the University of Colombo. Uh, professor, uh, but just before the break, we promised our viewers that we will speak about the vaccination program. But uh, I received a very interesting question uh, during the break. Uh, well, this question is interesting and controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, many people have been wondering what the answer to this question is. The question is, is COVID-19 man-made or did it occur naturally? Yes, Shalan, the thing is, uh, now I was reading uh, very current uh, scientific American magazines. There they argue, you know, it is very controversial because mm. there are, they propose two theories. One is uh, uh, saying, one, one set of scientists, they are saying that is the case. And uh, it is very controversial because no proper evidence to show that uh, it is man-made and mm. uh, so their, their natural theory is uh, because the pathogens can come from uh, uh, animal to humans mm. that is a uh, known thing and uh, so this again uh, they argue mm. you know there, there's science the politics behind this uh, and th that's why they are suggesting mm. but uh, the, there's another question to this uh, why this COVID-19 uh, virus is mm. mu mutating so fast. Mm. So it, 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 people are saying, scientists are saying, it, 
in natural, if it is going, the, they are generating mutations in a natural way. It won't generate it, it this fast. This fast. So, so that there are arguments a, for and against, uh, yeah. you know, this virus being man-made or yeah. naturally occurring. We can't say it is man-made because uh, people are trying to find evidence to prove that or not. Hmm. And uh, the thing is now, in normally mutations when they are occurring, hmm. uh, the the mutations uh, can be deleted out hmm. with a kind of proof proofreading uh, molecular mechanisms. Now hmm. it looks that that proofreading. Uh, mechanism, there is some lacking for that in this virus. So mm -hmm. that's what uh, scientists are uh, telling. Mm -hmm. Now, so why it is not very clear, but uh, the, we know that the, they are evolving very fast mm -hmm. rather than a natural virus, but it doesn't say that it is man-made, but uh, so people are searching for the for an answer for this. Uh, Professor, two more questions that have come in. Uh, two quick questions. Hmm. Has any person been uh, tested positive for the virus more than once? Uh, and the question number one. And number two is, uh, a person who is fully vaccinated, is there a guarantee that he will not get the virus in the future? Yeah, the, to answer the first question, uh, there, there can be uh, a possibility hmm. of uh, uh, giving the positivity uh, hmm. price. More than once. More than once. Uh, because that is again with the exposure hmm. and the second question uh, you asked uh, on if uh, I beg your pardon if a vaccinated person a fully vaccinated person uh -huh. uh, would be it, it would be a guarantee for that person that he will not contract the virus in the future yeah because now there were some very established vi uh, the vaccines hmm. you know we have been given all these smallpox vaccines and everything and uh, so I, I Personally, as an immunologist, I, I think uh, it is very, you know, premature to say hmm. for this because uh, lots of testing has to be done hmm. uh, before saying that. Hmm. Now, but uh, the vaccines already now, from starting from 1950s, we have been uh, getting these vaccines. Again, the, if the person is fully vaccinated with the number of uh, required boosters hmm. then uh, the person is okay but with this one we, on the experimental ba basis they are giving the vaccines you know boost giving the boosters you know so i can't say anything about the uh, fully vaccination hmm. how it can be given to covid 19 patients uh, professor you are an immunologist so i believe you would be one of the most suitable person to answer a question like this uh, one uh, matter that people really worry about right now mm -hmm. is uh, the lack of vaccines especially the AstraZeneca vaccine because the AstraZeneca vaccine was uh, the first vaccine that was given to the general public of Sri Lanka uh, people were very eager just as uh, mm -hmm. they were encouraged to go get this vaccine however about 600 pe 600,000 people right now don't have the second dose of the vaccine and uh, the time that has been announced initially by the world health organization has already lapsed the time within mm -hmm. which the booster shot should be taken however the world health organization has extended that period to another six months there is still no guarantee that these people will get a second shot of the vaccine now against such a backdrop the government has now announced that they will be providing vaccine cocktails mixes of vaccines so the first vaccine would be astrazeneca Second vaccine would be something else, Sputnik, uh, Sinopharm, uh, Sinovac, any of those brands. How effective is this move? Yes, Shalan, the thing is, as an immunologist, I, I, I think uh, if you get the first dose of the vaccine, hmm. we, we recognize, our immune system recognizes that. Hmm. And we build up some kind of memory. Hmm. And uh, then you have to give the same dosage the mm. same molecule mm. and the same to, vaccine you mean same vaccine to boost up mm. if you need to boost up you have to do the same mm. in in immunological terms mm. but in desperation if i don't know whether other countries are doing this so that on i can give the answer on, on the immunological basis mm. uh, uh, to have the successful immunization uh, the boost dose mm. uh, should be the the same vaccine Hmm. So, a person who gets uh, two of the same vaccines would get an immunity higher than a person who gets a cocktail of vaccines. Yeah, again, it, then, then you have to uh, do research and say that, uh, you know. Exactly. But, yeah. but according to research that has already been done on immunological hmm. terms, hmm. 
that would be the most possible or most likely scenario? Yeah, the thing is now, uh, the, the boosting, mm -hmm. if you have the memory, then uh, to boost the memory, mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to uh, get the full vaccination, mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, I need to say that uh, this is the same vaccine is the proper way of, you know, uh, Vaccinating. Uh, Professor, yeah. since you've also been working uh, affiliated with the Department of Zoology, mm -hmm. uh, there is another concern that's going around with uh, uh, the lion Thor mm -hmm. and also the lioness Sheena contracting COVID-19 mm -hmm. as to if COVID-19 can uh, spread from animals to humans. Now, we remember at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic across the world, uh, there were instances where reports came in of people uh, throwing their pets out of uh, the fourth, the fifth floor of, of mm -hmm. massive buildings uh, in fear that the pets could contract the virus and then pass it on to them. Um, is there really a possibility of a human contracting the COVID-19 virus from an animal who has contracted it? Yeah, uh, it is very natural that the, the infections or the pathogens are coming to humans mm. from animals. So that is uh, the scientific terms, they are called zoonotic infections. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a natural thing which is occurring. And uh, so the, uh, lots of research has been done uh, on that to show bacteria, viruses, you know, parasites um, coming from animals to uh, humans. So mm. there are a number of uh, pandemics occurred due to that. And the other way, the uh, going pathogens from humans to animals is again, there is evidence to show, but little mm. research has been done on that. Hmm. So it has been shown, uh, there are a few uh, situations where they have shown that uh, COVID-19 uh, infection uh, from humans has gone to pet animals hmm. uh, in few instances. Hmm. So it is a possibility. Uh, so that's why they are proposing hmm. uh, to protect animals as well if there are COVID-19 mm. patients at, at home, home, for example. To keep them away from your yeah, pets yeah. at home. Like now we are isolating humans mm. uh, if, they are, if they, are, they have exposure. Mm. So you have to do the same for the animals as well. Mm. There is a possibility, but uh, it can be prevented. Mm. And uh, I also uh, came across some evidence to show that um, if the animals are, now for uh, supposing uh, COVID-19 is going to a pet animal, to mm. a pet animal from the uh, human, Mm -hmm. then it doesn't come back. So mm -hmm. that's what, uh, you know, scientists say. So there's a possibility, mm -hmm. but little, little research has been done on this subject. Uh, Professor, we're in, f in the final few minutes of this show. Mm -hmm. I'd try to, like to squeeze in one more question. Um, we see some countries uh, beginning to provide third dose of the uh, COVID-19 vaccines to their public. Mm -hmm. They have even purchased uh, seconds and third, third doses. Mm -hmm. um, with COVID-19 variants coming in, with new variants coming in, uh, mm -hmm. posing greater risk to human life, Mm -hmm. uh, are we, is there a possibility in the future that Sri Lankans will have to continue to get vaccinated for the COVID-19 uh, virus mm -hmm. or, for, or get the COVID-19 vaccine mm -hmm. more than twice uh, as the virus continues to mutate and if it continues in the foreseeable future, two, three years ahead maybe? I think the, the number of doses uh, for the other very popular vaccines like, uh, mm -hmm. like the, the TB vaccine. AstraZeneca, yeah, are, Sinopharm. No, not only COVID-19, but mm. uh, other vaccines, uh, other well. vaccines okay. they, you know, they do the experiments. Mm. Now, if there's a vaccine, mm. we should provide antibodies to mm. that pathogen. Mm. So they test uh, how fast, uh, how efficiently we produce uh, antibodies with how many doses and all those things uh, uh, can be, you know, uh, researched and uh, through experiments, they have to decide that. Mm. But uh, I don't know whether uh, given third dose and other, whether they are coming through the research channel mm. that I don't know. Mm. But uh, there are uh, many other uh, vaccines, mm. uh, there are more than two doses. More than two doses. Two doses. So, the still, research on this uh, virus is not enough to come to a conclusion on those matters yeah. as well. Mm. And uh, of course, we've been discussing about the COVID-19 pandemic for years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, as we go along, as the virus continues to mutate, there will be more research, more information, mm -hmm. uh, and more details coming out on the situation uh, on the ground. Uh, I received many other questions from our viewers, uh, but uh, apologies as I could not pose them to the mm -hmm. professor as we 
have run out of time. But of course, we will continue to bring you uh, the latest details on the COVID-19 situation in the country as well as other matters close to your heart. Stay tuned as uh, we bring you Newsline every day at 8.30 p.m. That's a wrap of the show for today. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us on our show and clarifying these uh, pressing questions to the general public. And thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in as usual. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.